Hello everybody. Today I'm going to show you how to make a homemade pot roast with potatoes and carrots, onions. It's delicious. We can talk about CES, CES, what came out, new releases for our K1UP, which uh, I'm so excited to talk about. And uh, we can talk about uh, anything that's new in the arcade world. But uh, let me tidy up the kitchen and uh, I'll show you out there how to make a fantastic dinner which you throw in the oven, pretty much forget about, chuck on it once or twice, and you're going to have a wonderful dinner. If you're uh, looking to impress a girlfriend or a wife or your significant other or a roommate, brother, sister, whatever, this is an easy thing for us guys to cook, and I can show you how to do it. So I'll be right back after this. Well, here we are. We're back. The first thing we want to look at is our meat. I go to Kroger's. I love Kroger's. Um, I bought two of these. They were marked down $20 for two of these. This is this is a beautiful piece of meat. I've had it in a container for a day with uh, kosher salt and uh, oh, some of my spice on there. Just to let it soak in. Now I'm going to put this in my roaster, which I will show you before we get it in the oven. We're going to put that right on the grate. Yeah, wash that stuff off my hands. When you get a roast, uh, what I recommend is spend between 10 maybe $20 on a big roast, a rump roast, a bottom roast, round roast, top roast. It doesn't matter because when we cook it so long, it's going to fall apart. We're going to break down the muscle tissue and we're going to use the kosher salt. This is kosher salt. If you can see it, big crystals, big crystals. This is pink Himalayan. And of course, this is, you know, this is a regular salt. See? But, um, the, when the pandemic was going on, my wife and I were stocking up on everything. We got tons of salt downstairs, but this kosher salt is great. I mean, it's really great. Um, I need pepper. Um, if you watch my channel, I love going to thrift stores. There's times you have to buy brand new things, but, but uh, if you can pick something up at a thrift store, it's awesome. Uh, Got this in the thrift store. It's a pepper grinder for a restaurant, but it's awesome. Uh, it's like two bucks. Uh, okay, so let's get to get, get to work here. So we have our onions. I'm going to go ahead and cut those up. Uh, roast is so simple. Um, onions, carrots, potatoes, salt, pepper, and the meat. And, uh, you know, you want Worcestershire sauce in there um, and liquid to make your au jus afterwards. Or you can make gravy with it. My wife likes au jus. Um, it's really good. Uh, after after it's all said and done, I'll show you how to do that and thicken it up. But we're just gonna cut up our onions. Get these all cut up, big chunks. <clears throat> I'm gonna put those in our roasting pan over here. Spread them out, and uh, the potatoes or carrots. When we're out shopping, uh, we go out to the mall. They have a store called Ross's and TJ Maxx. And uh, that's where I get all my stainless steel work. Uh, stainless steel pots and pans. We started watching those cooking shows. And I've cooked most of my life. Baked. A lot of jobs I've had. But I was always frightened of stainless steel. I thought, oh my god, this stuff will burn. And it takes forever to clean. Well, I was wrong. Um, it's very easy to cook with. Um, I have electric stove, not gas. I am going to, we are going to have to get a new stove and fridge sometime, but not just yet, but we could go gas, but uh, um, I have more experience on electric, but I've cooked on gas at restaurants, obviously. So. But the uh, stainless steel equipment is so easy to use. Um, as long as you clean it afterwards, you can almost clean it with a washcloth and hot soapy water. Or, of course, you know, use the uh, scouring pad, the, the one that looks like aluminum. A little uh, aluminum mesh, you know, that the, those work great. If you, if you do burn something, uh, just let it soak for a little bit and it comes off. Uh, you can wash your potatoes and carrots if you want. We're taking the skin off the carrots, so it's kind of redundant. But uh, potatoes, a lot of times, I'll lose 
leave part of the skin on there. Wife likes that part. I do too. Gives them a rusty look. You could do a like a stripe, just instead of peeling the whole thing, just peel one, skip, peel, peel another, peel, skip. So it looks like it has stripes. You could do a tremendous amount of, of dishes with potatoes. I mean, there's potatoes are so versatile. And there's nothing like potatoes with salt and pepper. Now these are potatoes. Unless I just take the pillar towards my thumb. And it's not so sharp that I'm going to cut my thumb off or anything. It's a potato pillar. Yes, you can cut yourself with anything. That's true, but just some common sense and a little experience. Uh, I've got some uh, Yukon Gold potatoes left over from... Uh, I can't remember what we made. Uh, I, I got something special I made, but uh, I didn't get any more potatoes, little reds or anything. Um, those are good, little reds, but uh, Idaho potatoes, you know, the brown ones. Um, I guess it's your choice, but uh, I, I think the, the brown ones are the best for a roast. But these are what I had in the in the drawer, and uh, I got in carrots. So, you know, why well, buy something if you already have it? Um, these roast, I got to tell you, if you have a Kroger or whatever supermarket you shop at, check uh, every, every store, mark stuff down if it doesn't sell food, uh, before they donate it, you know, to food banks or before they throw it away. They mark it down because they still want to make some money off it. Um, and they have to do that every day, you know, rotate meat in and out, and uh, meat's very expensive. And if you can go in there and get some stuff marked down, you know, like, for instance, say you're making stir fry in a wok, you can go in there and pick up a T-bone steak, a ribeye steak, marked down five, six dollars, and that that is wonderful in your stir fry, or beef stew, or vegetable beef soup. You know, you don't have to settle for cheap cuts of meat. You just look for the markdown deals. Let me dump this in the, in the garbage. Okay, get everything done. Now, this is our garlic. These are just a couple dollars, and you can keep this hanging up, let it dry out. But you have fresh garlic all the time. Just break them up here. Lots of covering. We don't want a tremendous amount, but we want to give it a good little taste. Let's get all this outside off here. Pure squeaky toy, it's our Doberman. A way of saying I'm here, I'm back here. And uh, if you do decide to get the Doberman, they're great security dogs, but uh, they take more attention than a three year old. Yeah, it's just it's nuts. I'm just gonna cut these up here like this. Uh, get that plastic off there, that uh, wrapper, the skin. There we go, the skin. I uh, I started cooking when I was 16. You know, from school, a job at the mall called Bishop's Buffet he worked at and uh, they, they I don't know what happened to them but they're they haven't been out there for decades then uh, moved to a big city and worked at a bakery for several years and worked at some other restaurants anyway went through training and got into trucking and uh, that's what I did for a long time worked at factories um, did all kinds of jobs which now I'm grateful for because it's taught me so many different things now we're gonna cut the ends off our carrots just like that. You know, and this, uh, like I tell my, my boys, uh, they're all grown, but uh, this knife doesn't care what it cuts. It's made to cut, so keep your fingers out of the way. You know, the machines and tools, they, they don't have a soul or heart. They're just there to do a function. Now we're going to, let me get the garlic wrappers out there. We're going to put these carrots in our roasting pan over here. And we're going to spread our potatoes out. Let me move this out of the way and we're going to move this down. Here is our roasting pan. Okay. Now, I got the roast on this little grate, which I got at a thrift store for like 50 cents. Um, don't have a ton of potatoes, but we're not worried about that because it's just me and my wife. Let me go wash my hands off. You know, if it was the days when I have a whole army to feed of boys, you know, more potatoes, but this is a great meal. Um, you can have dinner with this. You can have seconds. The next day, it's even better. The day after that, it's even better. And 
I always I don't use the whole package of carrots because my wife likes those carrots like a Cracker Barrel with the brown sugar and uh, they're, just, they're just really sweet and, and delicious. Now we have our onions in here, potatoes, carrots, or garlic. I've already seasoned it the other day. I uh, got this at Sam's. It's pretty good. Uh, this is the salt, pepper, and garlic, and this is buttery steakhouse. Now uh, I want to get our Worcestershire in there. This is important. This is Worcestershire and Kroger. I'll get this in there. Give it a good beef taste. Um, and I'll show you what else we're going to do. These are uh, beef bouillon cubes. I'm going to put some of these in here to get that real beefy taste. Because uh, it all helps because afterwards we're going to make a delicious au jus and you know, we want to have a, a delicious beefy taste. My wife and I watched the uh, CES event uh, a week or two ago. We watched everybody talk about it. P-Dubs, Michael B, um, all the uh, channels, we watched them. Uh, the guy on the fringe, uh, we watched him. Um, nothing in there I want to buy. Um, really, nothing. Kind of curious a few months ago about the, the uh, you know, the, uh, what do they call it? The uh, slot machine thing, you know, the little Wheel of Fortune thing. We're kind of interested in that. And we saw it, we're like, I understand why they didn't put a handle on there, you know, a slot machine handle, but uh, if we're going to have a slot machine, that's what you want, you know. But I do understand. I'll tell you what, though, if it's, if it's 250 or something, it'd be interesting, but I doubt Arcade 1 Up is going to charge that little. Now, let's see here. We got our, uh, we got our, uh, Beef cubes in there. We're gonna put some pepper on here. Okay. Okay. Put a little salt in here. We got enough on our steak, so just on the outside. It's that pink Himalayan salt. Got a big bag of that at Big Lots, and it was like four ninety-seven, five bucks, huge bag, and I just use it all the time. Stock up. Uh, these are bay leaves. As you just put two of these in there on each side. Now we're going to get some water in here. On this, I'm just using my, uh, my coffee pitcher. Something like this, I'll put this in the oven for five and a half, six hours. Now I'm going to check on it about two hours into it, two and a half hours. But yeah, the longer this cooks, the softer that meat's going to be. What we're going to do in here is we're going to take our potatoes and carrots out when they're done. And we're going to put them in another pot so they don't really cook and become mush. And then we're going to let our, our meat cook a little longer. But uh, you need Worcestershire sauce. You gotta have this, okay? Salt and pepper, garlic. Really simple ingredients. Now last night I was just dying for a spaghetti, so I made spaghetti, spaghetti sauce, homemade bread, and then I made homemade garlic bread. And uh, this is one of them left. Um, this is the bread. Wife got me the bread wrapper and put bread in, but um, I can show you how to make that someday. But this looks pretty good. We're ready to put this in the oven. So. I'm going to put the lid on there. See if we can turn our camera here. So you can see this. Okay. Right, let's lower this a little. There we go. Okay, our oven's all ready. I've got the oven at 365. We can put it at 350. Uh, yeah, you see, got the lid on here. This roasting pan, stainless steel at Ross, has cost me about 25 bucks a year or two ago. Probably two years ago. I'm going to push it back there. Now we're going to set our time for six hours. Setting the time here. Setting the timer. Six hours. Start there. Then we're going to set our kitchen timer. For about two hours so we check on it there we go raise this up a little okay. 
sorry about all this. Okay, here we go. There we go, back to rig. Okay, so remember your ingredients. You need a nice roast. Um, try and look for one on sale. It'll have the yellow stickers on there, be marked down. Usually you do that in the mornings, eight, nine, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock. You know, if you wait too long in the evening, it's gonna be sold. But uh, usually it's on the end of the meat case, on the right side, or there's an area where they do this. And uh, sometimes you have to wait your turn to check them out because other people are in there. Now, if you don't want to do that, you can just look at the beef roast. This is the beef roast. Look at, uh, uh, look at the weight, the size, you know what you want. Now, I have bought wonderful roast at Sam's, good deals, but uh, I don't go there a lot. We go to Kroger mostly because I, I just like Kroger. I need carrots, potatoes, onions. Salt, pepper, garlic, and Worcestershire sauce. So uh, you want to get a roast, a beef roast. You want to get a uh, about a pound of carrots. Uh, get a uh, you know sack of uh, potatoes, a couple pounds of potatoes. Usually brown Idaho potatoes are good. You can use a little red. I use the uh, the Yukon Golden ones because that's what I had left. And uh, we didn't go to Kroger today, so uh, you need some Worcestershire sauce. You can use generic. You know, the better Worcestershire sauce, it should have more flavor into it, I believe. I've used all kinds. Uh, salt and pepper. I suggest you get kosher salt if you can. If you can't, just, just use uh, plenty of salt, salt to taste. Remember, you can always add salt. It's almost impossible to take it out. Okay, so don't oversalt it. Don't, you'll ruin it. But uh, we're going to stop there, and we'll come and check this. And uh, we'll check it halfway through, and I'll show you what the end result looks like. Okay, thanks. We'll talk to you in a little bit. Okay, now we're going to check it halfway through. We're going to take the roast out and turn the meat and check the vegetables. Uh, Jasmine knows what that is. Watch the steam. Okay. I'm going to bring it over here, Crystal, a little. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the, the meat over. It's on that little rack we put it on. And turn it over. And uh, we're going to turn our vegetables over. They're going to be almost done. You know, a couple hours in this in this hot bath, they're going to be done. But we'll give them, uh, we'll give them 45 minutes, a little longer. And uh, we'll take the vegetables out, drain some of the juice out. And uh, we'll keep the vegetables warm and cook the meat the rest of the way. And uh, then we're going to use this juice to make some delicious au jus for my wife. So let's put some more seasoning on there. And Kinder's, buttery steakhouse. Remember, like I told you, salt, pepper, and garlic. That's all you really need. Salt, pepper, and garlic. And we put plenty of salt on here and pepper. And we get garlic cut up in there. And we get the bay leaves and this water and au jus, Worcestershire sauce. And, uh, So we've turned everything. We're going to put it back in here. I'm going to turn the light off. And we're going to set. We got our timer set for three hours and 18 minutes. We set it for six hours. So we're going to put our kitchen timer on for about an hour. And we'll pull the. Uh, we'll pull the potatoes and carrots out so they don't cook too long. So uh, we'll be right back after. Uh, after about an hour. And we're back. Now we're going to take the roast out and take the vegetables out. Turn the oven light on. Remember, always watch the heat, steam coming out. Okay. Watch our steam. Now I've got another pot. What we're going to do is take the vegetables out. You know, we just don't want to cook them where they turn into mush. You know, you want the vegetables to have body. So we'll take them out because the meat's going to take a lot longer to cook. Now, um, at this point, 
let's say it's been cooking three and a half hours now it's just a matter of time you know how long you want to cook it the longer you cook it the more tender it'll be also the longer you cook, cook it the chance it'll, it'll become dry more dry you want know, the heat dries it out that's why like poultry you cook a turkey for all those hours you know on low heat like 320 because the low heat it gives it time to cook thoroughly without drying it out because this a lot of this meat just dries out so quick it's not even funny okay now we got to get the juice out of there so i'm going to get my cutting board here i'm just going to move this out so we can get that juice drain put it right there oh. Parallel with that. right there okay now we're just going to Pour this in here. There we go. Oh, look at that. Found some more carrots. Bonus. Didn't know you guys were in there. All right. Great. That's great. That's great. Yeah, we use all this juice to make a wonderful au jus. You can also make a gravy. It's really easy. It's not that hard. Okay, so we're going to put the lid back on this and cook this <clears throat> in the oven. Okay, watch the heat. Put that in there in the bottom. Turn our light off. Okay, now let's, uh, we've got our vegetables out of there. So let's put them back here on, the, put the lid on that. Let's put them back here on low. About, about five. That's fine. Now the next time we do this video, we'll be pulling it out. Because our vegetables are on low, and we'll pull that out. And I'll, I'll, uh, I'll show you how to make a au jus real quick. But other than that, we'll be ready to serve. And if you figure five to six hours, um, you know, and you don't even have to check this. If you put enough water in, just let it cook. It's going to be tender and delicious. You know, uh, I'm just getting a little particular about stuff. You know, over time you learn little tricks and uh, taking the vegetables out after a few hours, they're done. You know, just need to keep them warm. But the meat can can just cook. To, there's, a, there's a period where, uh, where you know, the meat's just, you're going to pass a, a red line where it's just not going to be edible. It's going to be like shoe leather. But, you know, you got a lot of leeway after several hours. You know, but talk to you when it's done. Hey everybody, here we are. Let's take our roast out. We got our vegetables, our carrots and potatoes here in the juice. Let's take our roast out. Put it right there. Let's turn the light off. Let's take the lid off. Get it here. Okay, that looks great. That looks really nice. That looks nice. Let's get some of the juice. That's the garlic. We're not going to use any of that. What we're going to do is we're going to take the roast over here. We're going to transfer it to this plate. And uh, we'll get the vegetables in there. Oh, look at this. Look at this. It's falling apart already. This is exactly what we want. Okay. We're going to put our little grate in the sink. Now we got to get our uh, vegetables over here. Put this back over here for now. Let's get our vegetables out. <clears throat> Oh, 
Hope you're getting this. Make sure you are. Let's bring a little over here. There we go. All right. Yeah, this is uh, really the best way to cook these vegetables. Slow, you know, under low heat. And uh, I wasn't a big cook when I was a young kid, right? But, you know, parents divorced and all that stuff, moved to the city. Anyway, I hung out with older guys who drink, and I found out they really cook certain things, you know, fried potatoes, roast, uh, chicken, all this easy, well, easy stuff now, but back then I was amazed what they could cook. And, you know, they said, well, I like, we like to eat, you know, I like to eat, I like to eat good food. And uh, if you know how to cook, if you know, you get some basic recipes under your belt, you know, where, uh, like, you could go in there and make a gravy or a, or bread or something, you can really, uh, you know, help your family. You can uh, save a lot of money. You can make some nice stuff and learn how to do some stuff. Now, we're going to put this uh, this beef juice back over on the stove. Get it get it on high heat. Let me move the camera over here. Okay. There we go. We're going to put the rest of this in there. There we go. Get that in there. And uh, what we're going to do with this is stir it. And we're going to strain it in this because we don't want all that stuff in there. So we're going to do that right now. Okay. All right, let me get some grits of that. Be right back. Okay, here we are. We got a good boil here. Now, what we want to do to thicken that up is put some cornstarch in. Just a little cornstarch. This cornstarch, and this is cold water. We're just going to stir that up. Yeah, it's amazing. This is going to thicken it up. Uh, I'm going to stir it while you, while you pour it in. Watch the steam. That's really about all you need. Two, two tablespoons of cornstarch and then some water. About a quarter to a third of a cup of water. And it'll really thicken it up. My wife loves this stuff. She dips bread in it, rolls, crackers fingers, everything. And all it is is, you know, the basics. Garlic, salt, pepper, and of course the beef juice. But, you know, we'll just boil that and it'll get thicker and thicker. And we strained off everything that was, we cooked the roast with. All the garlic, everything. Onions. You know. that's it just cook that until it's as thick as you want the longer it boils and you stir it the thicker it'll get it'll still thicken when you pull it off there you know but uh you can that's how you make gravies also with the cornstarch but uh that's it that's how to make a roast is anybody can do that uh any guy can do that put it in the oven for uh, four to six hours and there you go a great meal and i like mine with ketchup a1 whatever steak sauce got rolls and butter yeah, it's a great meal. I hope that's helpful. Uh, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. This is Rick. Thanks for watching.